Hi, we're going to look at eight, section 8-5, eight Factoring Special Products. So take something to write on and take notes on. Pause the video at any time to write your notes or go back and review a concept. And complete the check it out problems after each of the examples on your worksheet. Our learning targets today are I can factor perfect squared trinomials and I can factor the difference of two squares. Remember back in Unit 7 we talked about the perfect squared trinomials, those are special products and the difference of two squares. So we're going to be factoring those now to what they looked like in Unit 7. So a perfect square, a trinomial is a perfect square if the first and last terms are both perfect squares. So A and C must be perfect squares. And the middle term is twice the product of A times, square root of A times C. So 9x squared factors into 3x and 3x. 4 is a perfect square, factors into 2 and 2. So you take the square root of a, get 3x, square root of 4 is 2, multiply those together, times that by 2, and that's got to give you your middle term, or b. So he, write this down in your notes. Perfect square trinomials are in the form ax squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and it's going to factor into a plus b quantity squared. When the b term is negative, it's going to factor into a minus b quantity squared. And there's some two, two examples over here you can take a look at. So again, square, or the x squared is a perfect square, and 9 is a perfect square, and x squared here is a perfect square, and 1 is a perfect square. So those are perfect squared trinomials. So now we need to determine first if these are perfect squares, if they are perfect squared trinomial, and then factor. So we have to first determine if a is a perfect square. So factor into 3x and 3x. 64 is a perfect square, factor into 8 and 8. And now our b term has to be 2 times our a term, the product of our a and b, or a and c, excuse me, which would be 6x48x. So no, not a perfect square trinomial. Looking at example B, again, we have to see if our A is a perfect square. We get 9x and 9x, so give us 81x squared. 25 is a perfect square, 5 and 5. And so now we have to check our middle term, B, will be 2 times 9x times 5, which will be 90x. So yes, this is a perfect square trinomial. Then it's going to factor into 9x plus 5 quantity squared. In our last example, again, let's see if these are perfect squares. So a would be 6x times 6x. 14, oh, it's not a perfect square. So therefore, no, because c isn't a perfect square. So again, you're checking your, your first and last terms must be perfect squares, and then your middle term has to be twice the product of your square root of your first and last terms, or your a and c. So here are three check it outs to do. Again, make sure these are perfect squares, and if so, in this case, those are all perfect squares, check your b term, see if that holds true. Now let's look at, a, we have a square piece of cloth, must be cut into a tablecloth. The area is given by this polynomial, 16x squared minus 24x plus 9. The dimensions of the cloth are of the form cx minus d, where c and d are whole numbers. So find an expression for the perimeter of the cloth, and then find the perimeter when x is 11. So it's asking, can we factor 16x squared minus 24x plus 9? So we could use our factory methods we've done and look for a and c and we'll put them together. But now that we know about perfect square factors, or perfect square trinomials, let's see if we have perfect squares. So we can look at 16x squared goes into 4x and 4x. 9 is 3 and 3, so now let's check our middle term. It can be twice the product 
of those two, which is 24x. So we do have a perfect squared trinomial. This will factor into 4x minus 3 quantity squared. So that's going to be what uh, the will factor into, so length times width. Now it asks for an expression of the perimeter, so let's write that out. So this is our factored form of our perfect squared trinomial, what we started with. So remember for, uh, this is telling length times width, which means each side is 4x minus 3. There are four sides in a, tr in a square, so we take one of the side lengths and times it by 4. So our expression for our perimeter becomes 16x minus 12. That's our answer for A. Looking at B, find the perimeter and x is 11. Substitute 11 in for x. And the perimeter will be 164 inches So your when x is 11. So here's your check it out. Again, you're going to want to see if that polynomial is a perfect squared trinomial. And 9x squared is a perfect square, and 1 is a perfect square, and you just have to see if it's going to hold true. Good luck bringing any questions to class. So now, remember, again back in Unit 7, the difference of two squares has the form a squared minus b squared. The difference of two squares can be written as a product a plus b times a minus b. And this is what we were looking at before. In Unit 7, we had this, and we were going back up to that form. So a polynomial is a difference of two squares if, if there are two terms, one subtracted from the other, so you have to have subtraction here, and both terms are perfect squares. So in this example, the first term, 2x squared, is a perfect square, breaks into 2x and 2x, and 9 is a perfect square, 3 times 3. So when you have the difference of two squares, it breaks into a plus b times a minus b. So this example here, x squared minus 9, x, you have to take square root of x, square root of 9, so x plus 3 times x minus 3. That's the difference of perfect, difference of two squares. So now we need to determine if each, each binomial is a difference of two squares, if so factor, and if not, why not? So our first one, we have to see um, 3 is not a perfect square. So in this case, no, for that reason. It is subtracted, and that would be a perfect square, but this term here is a no. So for b, let's start over here. 100x squared breaks into 10x and 10x. We have subtraction, we have a difference. 4y squared breaks into 4y, or I'm sorry, just go with 2y. We're changing numbers here on it, 2y and 2y. So the difference of two squares are going to be 10x plus 2y and 10x minus 2y. And if you were to distribute and put it back together, you notice that the uh, 2xy terms are going to cancel each other out. Positive, tw I'm sorry, positive 20xy and a negative 20xy, leaving you with just your binomial here. For our last one, we have subtraction, so that's going to work so far. Now we have x to the fourth breaks into x squared and x squared. 25y to the sixth breaks into 5y cubed times 5y cubed. So yes, we have a difference of two squares for this one also. And this is going to break into, we write it out in factored form. We're going to get x squared plus 5y cubed times x squared minus 5y cubed, and that's factored form. So remember, recognize the difference of two squares. You've got the coefficients of the variable terms are perfect squares. Powers of variables, are terms they're even, then it's going to be a perfect square, and constants are perfect squares. That's how you notice. So here we had even variables, or I'm sorry, even exponents, and so those are going to be, we can break those into perfect squares. Here are your three to do. And looking just at our exponents here, that one is not going to be a difference because you, ha you cannot, y to the fifth is not a perfect square. So I gave you an answer. So to summarize this, the perfect square trinomials, for that be that your a and c 
must be perfect squares, and then B is going to be twice the square root of your A and C, which is what you're working on. The difference of two squares, both terms must be perfect squares, and you must be subtracting x squared minus 9, so we're subtracting. So again, you can factor as you have been, but if you have um, polynomials in those forms, your factoring is so much easier, so much quicker to see. So good luck, bring any questions to class.